One of the Linux distributions that I always have to take a look at every time they have a new release is Fedora. Fedora is really a giant among Linux distributions, one of the more popular desktop Linux distributions out there. And Fedora, although it's a, it's a community distribution, but really it has a corporation behind it that's pushing a lot of its development. Of course, I'm talking about Red Hat, which is owned by IBM. But, you know, Fedora is really interesting because they really push a lot of innovation. They do things like uh, ButterFS as the default file system, for example, Wayland as the default display server on desktop environments that are able to handle that, which forever has been just GNOME. But now Plasma has gotten to the point where uh, Fedora now has Wayland by default in both the GNOME edition and their Plasma edition. Today, I'm going to take a look at the recently released Fedora 34 with the the new GNOME 40 desktop environment. So this is going to be my first impression, not just of Fedora 34, but also of GNOME 40, because I've actually never taken a look at the, the new GNOME. So <laughs> I'm actually pretty excited about this. Let's see what I think. So let me switch over here to my desktop, and I'm going to run through an installation of Fedora. One of the things about Fedora, I don't use Fedora that often. I typically install Fedora about once a year. You know, every time they have a new release, I'll install it. And I always have problems with their installer. It seems like every single time I go to install Fedora, I have an issue with their installer. Not that their installer doesn't work. It's just I've always found the Anaconda installer rather confusing. So I'm hoping that maybe they've changed some of the uh, the installer, you know, the way it works. We'll see. So I'm going to install to hard drive here and should launch Anaconda for us and we wait and we wait now oh, there we go all right we have English US selected as our language so that's correct for me so I'll just click continue all right English US has been selected for the keyboard so I don't need to change that so I can skip that step time and date looks like the central time zone in the US has already been selected for me again I don't need to change anything so I'll skip that step Installation destination. So this is where we choose our drive where Fedora is going to be installed. Now, this is a virtual machine I'm installing this in today. And in this virtual machine, there's only one virtual hard drive. So that's the only one to select. Failed to save. Okay, no disk selected. So did I, I thought I clicked it the first time. I think this is one of those things I always have an issue with is you actually have to like click it twice. If you click it too many times, yeah, anyway, I'm going to click done. I hope that worked that time. I may have clicked it too many times. No, I, I think that was it. And then begin installation. Yeah, it's creating the ButterFS file system. I'm going to pause the uh, recording until this portion of the installer completes. All right, and that portion of the installer has completed. That took about 10 minutes for that portion of the installer. And then I'm going to click finish installation. We never did create a uh, username or set a password or anything like that, so I'm assuming we'll take care of that uh, maybe after the reboot. And the machine is rebooting. Let's see how long it takes to, to boot up here. Of course, Fedora is a systemd distribution. Let's see. Welcome to Fedora 34. All right, now we have this start setup screen here, and this is where we can do things like decide if we're going to do any kind of automatic uh, bug reporting. I'll turn that off for this VM location services. I don't really need that turned on in this VM as well. I'm not going to connect to any online accounts here. I do need to create a home user. My home user is going to be called DT. And click next, and then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. Then click next. All done. Start using Fedora. All right. And it says, welcome to GNOME 40. Do I want to take the tour? I probably should, <laughs> since I don't really know anything about GNOME 40. It says, get an overview press the activities. I mean, it's a nice little slideshow. I thought it would go into a little more detail. Yeah, so really not much of a point to that slideshow about GNOME 40, if I'm being honest. First things first, let's see if I can get a proper screen resolution. So if I hit the super key, would that actually bring up a menu? Well, it brings up this, but it used to. I, I thought we would get a list of our apps, or maybe I need to click this button here. I, um, again, I'm not that familiar with GNOME. I really haven't used GNOME extensively um, since the GNOME 2 days. I never really used GNOME 3, so obviously I don't know anything about GNOME 40 either, but I'm assuming if I search for display, 
I will get display settings and I can change the screen resolution to a more appropriate 1920 by 1080 resolution here. Yeah, let's keep those changes and close this window here. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So other than hitting the super key to get this uh, overview, if I click activities here, so I can either click that with the mouse or just hit the super key to get the same menu. I will say the menu uh, does show and hide rather smoothly here in this VM. Now, for those of you that are going to try to install this in a VM, here inside Vert Manager, I'm using for a video driver, I'm using the Vert IO driver. By default, Vert Manager, I think, uses the QXL driver. That's a little sluggish with GNOME and Wayland. So you try to use the Vert IO driver. And when you do that, actually the animations, you know, everything does seem to work rather smoothly. Let me pull up a terminal here. And of course, this is gonna be the GNOME terminal. How do I zoom in here? I gotta remember the key bindings for zooming in and out here. And let's do a uname dash R. And they are on one of the latest kernels here. So this is kernel version 5.11. And if I pull up htop, uh, htop is not found. Well, let's do a sudo dnf install htop. All right, and then give it our strong and complicated password. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire up htop and check system resource usage before I start opening any other programs because this will be uh, a lot closer to what it would be on a cold boot because I really haven't done anything other than open the terminal. All right, DNF has uh, synced the repositories. It's found htop. It wants to know, is it okay to install htop? Yes. I'm not sure why it asks yes or no for that because I specifically asked it to install htop. So why ask me again, yes or no? Because I, I wouldn't have typed sudo DNF install htop if I didn't really want htop. Uh, all right, so we are using right at one gig of RAM of the four gigs of RAM that I gave this VM, which is normal for GNOME. That's always been normal for GNOME 3 as it uses about a gig of RAM on a cold boot. And that's what GNOME 40 is also using. We're not really using any CPU at the moment, but then again, we're not really doing anything uh, that would uh, require any CPU. Now let me get a package count as far as the number of packages pre-installed on Fedora 34. Now on Debian based distros and Ubuntu based distros, you would do apt space dash dash list space installed. In DNF, you do DNF uh, list, no dashes, just DNF space list space installed. And I believe that will give us a list of everything installed. And then, of course, to get a line count, let's pipe that through WC, which is the word count program, and give it the L flag for line count. So that list has 1,695 lines in it. That means there's 1,695 packages installed out of the box on Fedora 34, actually 1694, because I specifically installed HTOP. So I would say Fedora 34 is definitely not a bloated distribution. That's actually not that many programs installed out of the box. And going to this menu here, I mean, everything that's installed fits on one screen, although we do have this utilities submenu here, which has nine things in it. So, but still not a lot of stuff installed. I mean, we have some of the standard GNOME applications, GNOME contacts, GNOME weather, uh, which is a rather interesting little weather application. So if I wanted to search for weather and I wanted to search for, I don't know, Chicago, I'm not actually in Chicago. I think you guys know that. Can I actually get that? I got to uh, specify Chicago, Illinois. Ah, and then we get, I guess, our hourly forecast. Does it do any kind of like five day forecast or anything like that? I'm sure it does. I ah, think you got to click daily here. Ah, now we get the weekly forecast. Very cool. Yeah, not a bad little weather app. And going back into the activities menu here, we also have the GNOME clock utility, GNOME maps, GNOME photos, GNOME videos. And let me click on the little help screen here. And this is videos, also known as Totem. So this is the old Totem program. Now, GNOME has renamed a lot of their programs to where they use rather generic names like context, maps, videos, but the actual name of the program is Totem. So if you launch this from a terminal or from DMenu or Rofi or something like that, you would actually specify Totem as the name of the program to run. Getting back into the activities and then into this menu, that's kind of convoluted to get to your applications menu where you have to do two separate actions because I would like 
I mean, in most desktop environments and window managers, anything that has any kind of application menu built into it, typically you hit the super key and right away you're looking at a list of applications. But in this case, I'm actually looking at, I guess, virtual desktops here in this first menu where really I think the default screen for this really should be the applications themselves. That's, that's a little weird. That's definitely different than the way everyone else does it. And different doesn't necessarily mean bad, but in this case, I, I don't like it. Of course, that was the GNOME calculator, a fine calculator. The text editor is your standard text editor for uh, the GNOME desktop environment, which is gedit. This is gedit 40.0. A very nice plain text editor. Gedit is actually rather extensible. There's a ton of plugins out there that you that are available for Gedit. You can actually turn it into a, a rather nice code editor for those that uh, prefer a more traditional kind of text editor than, you know, as opposed to something like Vim or Emacs. And also under the applications, we have our document scanner settings. Now the settings is like your uh, control panel. And this is where you have all your settings for system stuff like network, Bluetooth, uh, notifications, power settings, uh, the display settings where I changed the resolution earlier. Um, we can add and remove users, uh, date and time and all of that. Of course, the most interesting thing in the settings manager is actually the background settings because I want to check out some of the wallpapers that are installed out of the box here in Fedora 34 because, you know, the wallpaper pack is the most important thing. And I will say the wallpapers, uh, just looking at this wallpaper pack, I've seen most of these wallpapers before. I think a lot of these are older wallpapers they've used in earlier editions. I know I've seen this one here, this wintry one before. Uh, yeah, I've seen this one here, the rocks in the sand here. And uh, now this one that they're using by default may be something new. And I actually kind of like this abstract art they're going with. Let's try this one here. That's a little darker. Now, since we're using a, a very dark uh, theme here, it's almost a black theme for the uh, Gnome shell theme. You probably want a lighter wallpaper. So, you know, something like that is a nice contrast. So a light wallpaper with a, a dark theme really makes, you know, everything pop out. Yeah, that's a really nice photograph as well. How about this one? Uh, just a wheat field. And then it looks like we have some colored pencils. That's interesting too. I'm going to go back to the uh, default wallpaper for now. Getting back in the applications, we also have the GNOME system monitor, which is your graphical system monitor. I typically don't like using the graphical system monitors to check system resource usage when I do these kinds of videos because I like using the same tool regardless of distro desktop environment. So I always install the same thing to check that stuff HTOP because things can vary between the GNOME system monitor, the XFC system monitor, whatever it is that KDE Plasma uses for a system monitor. You know, I just want to use the same tool for everything. That way it's as fair a comparison as possible between the various distros and desktop environments. We have GNOME boxes, which is uh, for installing virtual machines. GNOME boxes is a front end to uh, KVM. So it's essentially kind of like a vert manager. It's just, you know, a different kind of vert manager. GNOME boxes and it's rather simple to use. It's actually pretty easy to spin up a VM in GNOME boxes. I, I've never actually used it myself because it's a GNOME application. And, to, you know, I don't know if it has any hard dependencies on a lot of the other GNOME applications. But typically I try to avoid a lot of the GNOME applications and the KDE applications unless I need them because sometimes they bring in some extra dependencies that I don't need as a standalone window manager user. Also under applications, of course, we have the GNOME terminal, which we've already taken a look at. We have Rhythmbox as our audio player. Rhythmbox, one of the best audio players out there as far as free and open source software. They are on Rhythmbox 3.4.4. I wonder if they have a hot key to bring up the terminal. Uh, in a lot of distributions, Control-Alt-T brings up a terminal. That's typically the case for Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distros, but it's kind of a standard that a lot of other distributions have adopted. Uh, Control-Alt-T does not bring up a terminal here in GNOME. Now, I could go into the Settings Manager once again and go down to Keyboard and to Keyboard Shortcuts, and I could see if they actually had some kind of key binding for the terminal. I would assume it would be under, I don't know, launchers. Yeah, launch calendar, email client, browser. None of these are enabled except the help browser, I guess some kind of help screen. But it doesn't look like they have a lot of key bindings set out of the box. So a lot of this stuff doesn't look like it's been set. 
So I'm stuck with, if I wanted to go to a terminal, I've got to hit two buttons just to get to this screen and then click a third time to get to the terminal. Uh, let's open up our file manager. So if I go into utilities, where is the file manager? That's something I haven't seen. Where is, have, have I just completely missed it? Uh, let me do a search for it. I, I believe they just call it files. Yeah, there it is. Uh, maybe I was just missing it, but if I did uh, super and the left key, one thing about GNOME, I, I do like, you know, the fact that they do have these minded super left and super right for uh, snapping into one half of a grid. The windows, and of course, super up maximizes, super down unmaximizes. Let me kill the file manager there. Just uh, taking a brief look at GNOME 40, I will say it's very reminiscent to GNOME 3. I, I, if you were on GNOME 3, GNOME 40, Looks the same. We still have this centered uh, time and date. Uh, I had the vert manager thing pop down there for a second. But if you click on the time and date, you get your calendar. You also get a notification section. So if you had notifications, they'd be listed here. You also have uh, events. So I guess this is where, you know, in your like to do list or contacts and you, you, your weather applet also appears here, world clock. So if you had some time stuff, that is really neat that all of that is integrated into this one little pop down. I, I will give those guys props for that that that's pretty smart in my book your sys tray over here i like how everything sits in the one applet i'm assuming that's just one applet since it's all three are highlighted when I, I click on it you have your power sessions here and of course that is the volume control and that is the network manager Overall, I will say uh, Fedora 34 looks rather clean, very polished. Fedora always looks good. It always looks like a professional corporate kind of product. And that's one of the things I really give Fedora credit for. As far as GNOME 40, GNOME 40, I will say, also looks very clean and polished. As far as workflow, I, I honestly uh, am kind of can't stand the workflow. The fact that to get to an applications menu, you have to click twice just to get here and then after clicking twice you have to click a third time to launch the application assuming you can click on it with the mouse or do a search for it that's way too much uh, effort just to launch your applications you know really you just need a hotkey to bring up that kind of menu or a hotkey to bring up a run prompt and I think they do have one I can't remember what it is I think it's alt f2 for a run prompt, yeah. So you do have that. That's like a built-in uh, GNOME run prompt. So that probably would be something I would use most of the time in GNOME rather than in that activities menu. Or I may just install a third-party run prompt, you know, something like D menu or Rofi. I know a lot of people might complain about GNOME as far as GNOME 3 and now GNOME 40. There's no... Uh, I guess default dock. There's no panel or dock as far as where your applications are sitting. I mean, you got this top panel, but honestly, that top panel really doesn't do much. I mean, it holds a sys tray <laughs> and it has this activities thing that you could click on, but really, you don't even need that if it's hotkeyed to super anyway. It's, it's almost like that panel is wasted space. It, it, it doesn't seem like it does as much stuff as what you would think a panel would do. I will give GNOME 40 credit as far as uh, pushing the boundaries and doing things different. I mean, it does things differently than every other desktop environment known to man. Um, as far as for me, it's just not me. I, I'm just so used to a different kind of workflow, more efficient workflow, more keyboard driven workflow. But I don't want to get off track with GNOME 40. Uh, Fedora 34 looks like a fantastic distribution. The installer, which I always said I had a problem with, that installer was really easy. I didn't have to click on anything. All I had to do was tell it what drive to install to. Uh, so uh, I, I know in past versions of Fedora, it was a little more involved. There were more things to click on and more settings to set. I still don't like how you have to click done in the top left hand corner of the installer because most people when they're in an application, they expect when you're done with something, it should be at the bottom of the screen, bottom center, bottom right, or if you're going to put it at the top, top right, maybe top left is like the last place you would ever look for those continue forward kind of button. So that's still a little weird. And also when I clicked on the drive, you actually have to click on the drive twice <laughs> for it to take effect. That's still a little clunky. Uh, the Anaconda installer, it's not horrible, but I mean, compared to uh, Ubuntu's Ubiquity installer, compared to the Calamares installer that so many distributions use now, the Anaconda installer is definitely still my least favorite. 
Overall, though, I think Fedora 34 is a solid product, and I do want to congratulate everybody that worked on Fedora 34 and those of you that helped contribute to the recently released GNOME 40. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show, Absy, Dallas, Gabe, Lou, Mitchell, Alan, Akami, Arch, 30, Chuck, David, The Other, David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Polytech, Scott, Steven, Smith, Wes, and Willie. They are the producers of this episode. Without these guys, this quick first look at Fedora 34, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel has no corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. It's like Gnome is trying to hide their applications.